Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Gregory Wilpert coming to you from Quito, Ecuador. The Mexican government is refusing to release a report on the investigation into the disappearance of 43 students from the town of Ayotzinapa that occurred two years ago. The report was supposed to have been released last August, but was withheld for undisclosed reasons, according to the New York Times, which saw the report. The case of the 43 students who attended a teacher training school in Ayotzinapa and who participated in a protest in a nearby town were ambushed on their way to the uh, home two years ago and disappeared. Some accounts say they were arrested by local police and then turned over to criminal gang and then killed. The case has become emblematic for many Mexicans because of the government's collusion with organized crime in order to repress political activism. Joining us from Mexico to discuss the secret report is Annabel Hernandez. She is an investigative reporter uh, in Mexico and has seen the government report. Thanks, Annabelle, for joining us today. Hi, hello, thanks for inviting me. So uh, tell us first, what are some of the main issues that this secret report uh, dic discloses about the investigation into the uh, missing students? What, what is it that you found out in looking at this report? Well, first I wish to explain that I have been investigating the case for the last two years. And I just uh, wrote a book called La Verdadera Noche de Iguala. And I got these two documents, uh, intern documents from the PGR since the last September. I got these documents and I include them in my book. That's why um, New York Times also talk about my book and my, my research. Even they also get this document just recently. So I can tell you that these two documents are key in the case. In the, internal, the, the Internal Affairs Office inside the PGR decided on last April make two different uh, investiga internal investigations. One about the, just the inspections and all the work that the PGR make in the Rio San Juan where supposedly the government, the federal government, uh, found the remains of one of the, at least of one of the students uh, that disappeared, Alexander Mora. And the other uh, big document is about all the internal investigation about how the PGR made the investigation. I mean, the, is the investigation of the investigation. These two documents has um, a very important uh, information that sadly have been, um, have been not public in Mexico by the PGR. The government didn't want to release to the opinion public in Mexico. And that's why I have to include these, these documents in my, in my book. And this is why um, the, the New York Times decided also to publish uh, one of these documents. The documents are very important. In, I mean, the, the, there are five very important conclusions of these documents that destroy all the official version of the government inside the government, if you, if you understand what I mean. The first in very important conclusion is that the PGR, all the people that were investigating the case of about the 43 missing students, um, manipulate the investigation. Instead, try to follow and find the truth. They just were focused for the last two years in the theory about the Guerreros Unidos, the small gang in Guala, and the mayor and the municipal police. They, the the PGR just was focused in these in this, um, uh, lines of investigation. Instead, investigate the battalion, the army, and the federal police. This is one of the most important conclusions of these documents. In this document, the internal affairs area of, PG, of the PGR order to investigate to the Capitan Crespo, one of the most important uh, members of the army in Iguala. They, they, they are ordered, ordered to, to investigate him because the, his connections with the orga, organized crime. The second point that is very important in these documents is that for the first time, this internal affairs area order to investigate not just to the Capitan Crespo, also to all the army, to all the 27 battalion 
because their connections not just because uh, maybe omission in that uh, in, in that in that um, night also because they could uh, be a part of the attack and also um, uh, abuse of the authority against the students that night the other point the third point that is very important in this report is that also the tenor affairs area is ordering that the at least two federal police, at least two federal police should be arrested immediately because they were involved directly with the disappearance of the students. The fourth point that is key in the story is that all the story related with the, the students were killed and born in, in a landfill in Kokula and the remains supposedly were found in a river in the in the river San Juan, all this official story, the the the, the story that the government Mexican government called uh, la verdad histórica the of the case is not real. This document said is not real. Is nothing true in this version. The rest of the people that supposedly murdered and burned the students were arrested illegally. All their depositions doesn't have any value. Um, how can I say it? any any judicial um, value? And also they were tortured. They they are saying this this report are, are saying that all the inspections in the river Kukula were in the Kukula River were um, not legal and not just not legal. The document is saying that maybe all the proofs including the remains, were manipulated by the authority. This authority, the head of all this uh, inspection and all this um, work done in Cocula River was Tomás Serón de Lucio. He was the head of the uh, uh, agency of uh, criminal investigations inside the PGR. And this document is saying that Tomás Serón de Lucio um, um, uh, didn't follow the law he broke the law and also the, the the team that works with him that day and also that he um, forced uh, to give some uh, declarations the positions and, um, and and forced to the to the witness to go there uh, breaking all the all the rules uh, to to be able to do that so um, yeah it sounds like this is a very explosive report um, and I, I mean, I'm wondering for two things. One is, you know, why has the report not been released? And secondly, um, has this report, uh, the leaking of this report, gotten any attention in Mexican media? So first, why hasn't it been released? What is the government saying about it? Well, I don't know why. what the government is saying about it. I mean, I, I, I don't know the, the official version of why the document uh, were hiding the documents were hidden by the Mexican government. What I know is the internal version about this. I talked with people that was directly involved in these investigations. And I can tell you that they told me when I got access to these documents in last September, these, uh, some people that was involved in this investigation told me that the, when they finished their work, and they gave these doc show these documents to the attorney general. Um, uh, to the attorney general in, in that in that moment was uh, Areli Gomez. She said that it's better to not release and not make public these documents uh, because um, it should be better if the people that work in this investigation manipulate change some of the conclusions because the conclusions were very uncomfortable for the government. Why? Why? Why is the real deep reason? Why? But because the government didn't want uh, to 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 release these documents even to the relatives of the forest range missing students. I think it's a key key fact on all this. If all the theory, if all the story about Kokula, the landfill in Kokula is not real, is false. If all the story about how the government, Mexican government, supposedly found the remains of the student Alexander Mora in the river, if these two stories are false, why the Mexican government 
had in their hands the remains of Alexander Mora. I mean, the proof that the Mexican government want to use to close the case, now is the proof that incriminate the Mexican government because there's no reasons. Now the Mexican government have to explain, have to explain. Well, if in the internal affairs say that all these stories are false, they have to explain why they have these remains in their hands. And I think that is the key point of the issue. And that's why they didn't want to, re to release these documents because, I mean, of course, it's not just the destruction about the official version is the a directly incrimination against the government. Mm. That, I think that is the reason why the Mexican government didn't want to make publish, public these documents and is the same reason why it's very important to make them public. And has it gotten public attention at all in Mexican media? That is, in, in broader the mass media, that you know, not not just the you know the progressive media, but also in the in the mainstream media in Mexico. I think that now even the official media have had to have to talk about this case. I can tell you that the last uh, Saturday, I decide as a journalist release one of the documents, the documents about uh, Cocula and uh, San Juan River. I decide to put it in a web page of the book, verdaderanochedeiguala.com. And now everyone, you in Mexico, everyone can read this report and make their own conclusions. I mean, read the report, don't believe me. I mean, make your own conclusion and you will find the same things that found uh, the New York Times. I mean, this document, is, this document is very important. Now it's released. Now everyone can read it. And um, I think this release has been very uncomfortable for, for the government because the government, as you know, after the publication of uh, the New York Times, tried to say, well, the document exists but doesn't exist. I mean, it's not legal yet. Now the document is open to everyone. Everyone can get their own conclusions and the government now have to give answers. Okay, what will you do with this, about the conclusion of these documents? I mean, this is the big question to the Mexican government. And I think that this, this is why these documents now released one of them. I, I will release the second one, the big one in the next weeks, in the next days. And I think that now the debate is open in Mexico and no one can, can still hide in the truth. Mm. And what has the, the reaction been from the family members? Are they um, uh, responding to this report? And, if, and in what way, what are, what are their next steps? I had a meeting with the relatives of the 43 missing students and with the students uh, of the school last Sunday. And I, they asked me to go to the school, to Ayotzinapa, to give and inform about my, my investigative uh, investigation as a journalist. I have my investigation as a, as a journalist. And um, they were very shocked about that even the government promised to them give, give them the report, the internal, uh, the report about the internal affairs um, office in, of the PGRE. Uh, the government denied, didn't want, at the end, they didn't want to give them this document. And uh, when they they were able to know by my, through me which was the content of this document, they were very shocked. They were very moved. They were very sad. They feel very frustrated because I think these families, for the last two years, even all the confrontation with the government, they really want to trust in the government. Now they can see that they cannot trust and they are our origin, they are asking, they are demanding to the government to open all the documents and be transparent and be honest about all this information. Well, thanks so much, uh, Annabelle, for being with us today. Uh, we're definitely going to continue to follow the story and uh, we'd love to have you on again. Thanks to you. And thank you for watching The Real News Network.